Good morning. So today I'm going to talk to you about raising godly children. And I'm going to give you key, um, six key steps to raising godly children. Now before I get started, I want to tell you that, um, that Jeff and I don't have it all together. And our children are not perfect. And we mess up um, a lot. So number one, the number one key step to raising godly children is... Number one, you must develop a real relationship with God. Um, Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7 says, Love the Lord God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. In other words, talk about God all the time and your love for Him. This passage um, instructs us as parents to love the Lord God with all of your heart um, and then impress them on your children. Not impress this love on your children, but it, it first instructs us to love the Lord God with all of your heart. And I believe that that's contagious. Um, in order to teach your children how to have a real relationship with God, you first must have one. You can't teach someone to do something that you don't know how to do. Or you can't teach someone to be something that you are not. So the first key is to, de to develop a real relationship with God. Um, not a Sunday relationship with God, but a, a true, real relationship with God. Number two is you must make the Word of God your standard. There's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions about a lot of things, but the only opinion that should really matter is God's opinion. Over the years, um, our standards as a society, they have drifted, um, they've changed quite a bit, they've lessened, and we use the standard, our standard is usually what others do or what others say, and we often, um, I know as me, as a parent, um, I often find myself thinking or saying, well, you know, at least they're not doing this, or at least they're not getting into this, or... You know, there's worse things that they could be doing, but God's word should be um, should be our standard, not what um, what other people are doing or what other people are allowing their children to do. Number three, so number one is develop a real relationship with God. Number two is make the word of God your standard. And number three, you must protect your children. Protect your children. Protect them from the world. Um, if you have decided to that you're going to raise your children, you have to decide, am I going to raise them to be able to function in the world, or am I going to raise them to be world changers? Um, and I know for us, we are raising our children um, as world changers. We're raising them with the kingdom in mind, um, with the eternal things in mind. So it can't be both. You can't um, raise your children to, um, to be a part of the world. You have to raise your children to change the world. So it cannot be both. Um, you have to protect them from the media. This includes TV, music, radio. I try to be very, very cautious. I know I talked about this um, last week, but I try to be very, very cautious about what kind of music my children listen to. Um, a lot of people will say that my children are sheltered because they don't know a whole lot of secular music, um, which is fine. They're going to be sheltered. That's, that's okay. Um, my kids probably don't even know what MTV is. And, and that is okay. They they don't have to do what's cool. It's not, um, I, I'm going to protect them from what other people will say is cool. If, if they turn out to be geeks or whatever, that is okay as long as um, they're a geek for God. So you also have to protect them from drugs and alcohol. Uh, protect them at all costs. Above all things, protect your children. Don't... Um, don't get wrapped up in hurting someone's feelings because you don't allow your children to do something. You, you have to protect them. So number one, I told you you must develop a real relationship with God. Number two, make the Word of God your standard. Number three, protect your children. Number four, understand your child's needs. Um, Psalm 51, 5 says, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. So you have to realize that your children, they are born sinners and they will mess up. This is instilled in them from the time they were formed in your womb if you're a mother. So they are natural sinners. Um, but you need to learn what makes your child feel loved. 
learn, um, learn their love languages. Um, Gary Chapman wrote a book, The Five Love Languages. Many of you have heard of The Five Love Languages. And as husband and wife, we always, Jeff and I always tell people to read that. But they also make Bible love languages for kids. And I encourage you to get that book, learn your child's love language, learn what makes them feel loved. Um, I have one child that gifts, that's his way of feeling love. If I buy him something, he feels loved. Another one, if I tell him, good job, Reagan, that makes him feel loved. He, he's looking for that affirmation. But they each have um, different ways that, that they feel loved. Jacob, if you know Jacob, you know he is a hugger. He is touchy-feely and you just have to touch him, and that makes him feel loved. So understand what your children need to feel loved. Number five, you must train your children. You have to train them. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on earth. If your children are in children's church at Revolve Church, they should know this scripture. We have, Julie and I have taught them this. We have made them memorize this. We say it all the time. They should know this. Jeff and I use this on our children all the time. If they um, are disobedient, we'll say, what does Ephesians 6, 1 say? I've made Reagan write it many times. Um, so Ephesians 6, 1, your children need to know that. But you have to train your children to obey you. They're not born natural obeyers. They're going to go against what is wrong. You have to teach them to do what is right. Uh, sometimes if you'll look at a child and they're making a certain expression and you'll say, that looks just like your mama or that looks just like your daddy or you're acting just like your grandma. It's because they are trained on how to act. So you have trained your children whether you um, know it or not or whether you mean to or not, you're training them. So you want to train them to do right. If they see you pull up to the stop sign and take some money out and hand it to a homeless person, you are training them to do that. That is going to be natural to them, and that's what they're going to, they're going to do. So if you're generous, you're going to teach your children to be generous. If you're selfish, you're going to teach your children to be selfish. Um, if you're nice, you're going to teach them to be nice. If you're rude, you're going to teach them to be rude. So make sure that you're training your children, um, that you're training them right to do, to do good. So number six. So we said, okay, number one was develop a real relationship with God yourself. Um, number two, make the Word of God your standard. Number three, protect your children. Number four was um, understand your child's needs. Number five, train your children. And number six, bless your children. Um, don't leave your children like Esau in Genesis 27, verse 34. It says, when Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. So he was begging for his father to bless him. Don't make your children beg you to bless them. Um, Jesus blessed the children, and Jesus valued children. And I really don't think that Jesus valued anything that wasn't that he didn't feel was important. If he valued it, then I feel like it was important. Um, in Mark 10, verse 13 through 16, it says, One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so that he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who were like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and he placed his hands on their heads and he blessed them. He blessed them because the children were important. You know, a lot of times we say, we call our children little blessings, and we say that we're blessed because we have children, but then we don't treat them like they're a true blessing. So make sure that, um, that you're treating your children like they're a blessing, and you're doing things for them and with them that are a blessing to them. So remember these today. Remember that number one is develop a real relationship with God. Number two, make the Word of God your standard. Number three, protect your children. Number four, understand your child's needs. Number five, train your children. And number six, bless your children. Hope you all have a great day. Remember today as you pray to pray for Diana Gomez's mother who is um, in the hospital. She's very sick. So if you could take a moment right now to pray for her. Also for um, Hannah, and Chad's Riley, Hannah and Chad Riley's 
little boy Ridge, make sure that you take a moment today to pray for him and pray for um, our services this week. Thanks and have a great week.